I'm going to spend the next 30 days launching a product and I'm going to give myself a budget of $500 to do it. For those who don't know me, my name is Yuki. I left my nine to five job as a product manager at a tech startup in order to do something new. As for my motivations, I've always done software product management, but I want to gain a new skill in this process and I really wanna do something with physical product. I've not launched anything physical before. And as a PM, you always want to start with the problem you want to solve. And for me, I had a problem when I was working at Goldman Sachs that I solved with this specific journaling method. I want to turn that into a journal that I can then sell. On day one, I needed to choose how to get my notebook printed. And to keep it simple for a beginner, I'm doing print on demand, which means I don't have to deal with making a bulk order or storing the notebooks since I don't have any space where I live. I watched a few videos and here are the three options that I learned about. Lulu, Printify, and Vibrant. I only have three requirements for this notebook. One, I need to be able to customize the inside pages and not have generic lined or dotted pages inside. The Printify notebooks only let me customize a couple of the inside pages or just the covers, so that was out. Two, I need the notebook to be able to lay flat when I put it on the table and both Vervant and Lulu provide options for saddle stitching. I personally prefer saddle stitch because I find it hard to write in a book that doesn't lay flat. Three, I need to be able to get started right away and Vervant was mentioned by another YouTuber, but since I would have to get a quote, I decided I would put that off for now and just go with Lulu. Now that I know where I'm printing it, I need to figure out what dimensions and file upload requirements there are so I can get started with the design. Once I started looking at all the possible book sizes though, I started to get overwhelmed. With so many options, I'll take my best guess and then start with the design and adjust if I need to. In order for you to understand the design choices I'm making, you have to know a little bit about my backstory and the problem this journal is meant to help with. Back when I worked for Goldman Sachs a couple of years ago, I started getting mysterious stomach pains. I could not link it to what I did or ate that day. It started getting worse and stranger when I went to doctors and specialists and no one could figure it out. I remembered that I used to get stomach pain in college too and when I went to my doctor about it, she suggested maybe it was due to stress. One day while talking about stress with a friend, he mentioned he had started an emotion tracking journal on advice of his therapist. I looked into it and did a variation of pain tracking for my stomach issues. Grabbing a planner that still had some empty pages in it, I started tracking what I was experiencing, the level of pain, who I was talking to at the time, what was going on, how I felt, and what time it happened. This finally let me see that whenever I was feeling stress, especially in a situation where I might get judged, my stomach pain would spike that day. I started taking walks and looking for another job where I wouldn't be in a place that was starting to make me sick. I stopped buying into the belief that if I had more strategies for resilience and stress resilience, I would be able to power through. In reality, I was getting weaker and more prone to stress. Just like when you dislocate your shoulder, you're more likely to dislocate it in the future. That's how I felt. Once my stomach started being triggered by stress, it was more likely to do so in the future. Now, where does that lead for a design? Here's what worked about how I was tracking and the planner I used. This is what my pain tracker looked like. I started marking from 1 to 10 the intensity of my stomach pain and the details of what was going on. The planner had a time wheel that let me visualize my day, but enough white space to write out all the relevant details, which you can't do with most planners. I found that I didn't need a separate AM and PM wheel. I also didn't use the task section. Really, what I needed was a section to write down insights when I spotted a pattern as my journaling went on. Plus, I needed equal space around the wheel to write down all the details. That means the best size is a square, and since the journal that I used was 6 by 8 inches, I figure the small square size will be good enough for the size of this new notebook. At this point, I should probably come up with a name for my journal because I'm going to need that in my designs. I did some brainstorming about names, including words like circle wheel dial to reference the clock mechanism. Also, the fact that this isn't a regular planner, it's to track your feelings. I even used AI to help me a little bit to come up with more names. Feel wheel was cute. I like the use of the word compass. I went with Insight Compass for now because there's nothing that matches it as another journal on Google and it's free on TikTok. But what do you think? Do you have other suggestions? Comment below. I spent a little bit of time on the design and now I'm going to take tomorrow to finish polishing it up and finishing it. So at the end of day one, I've been able to come up with a name, 
come up with the concept and get the design started and I'll finish it tomorrow, hopefully. That was way faster than I was expecting. I thought I would take 30 days to launch this. I think I can do it in seven. Day two, I'm a little late getting started on the design. This design is very simple, at least it should be. And I think I'm overthinking it and that's why I'm dragging my feet. But all I need is a circle, some lines around it to represent the timestamps, a place for the date, and then somewhere in between, some pages to help you reflect on the patterns you're noticing with the intensity of emotion that you're feeling, intensity of pain, whatever it is that you're specifically tracking. For a number of pages, saddle stitch paperbacks are maxed at 48 pages. So I only need 48 pages, a little less than that for my final PDF. Once I finished the interior pages, it was time to design the cover, which I kept super simple. I tried a light cover at first, didn't like the result, and then switched it to a dark cover. Once I previewed that and made sure I liked the result, I then published it and was able to order the book to my home. It's just that when you try to ship to the US, it takes twice as long with the cheapest shipping option. Compare that with shipping to the UK, which is 9 to 11 days with the cheapest shipping option. Since I'm shipping to the UK, I decided to create another account where I can pay in pounds since once you create your account and set your currency, you can't change it. So I have an account for paying in pounds and I have an account for paying in dollars. But either way, the difference is really small and I paid in pounds in the end to ship to the UK. It's annoying to find out that the shipping times to the US are so long because that is where a lot of these high stress, high paying jobs are. So the people with more disposable income who would be buying this kind of stuff would be based in the US. But I also imagine somebody working in finance in the UK might benefit as well. Also in the US, access to mental health and good mental health is a bit more annoying. A lot of it is out of pocket. So I imagine most people aren't getting the help that they need. At the end of day two, I realized I actually didn't really want to finish this project because as soon as I put this in the world, it's a chance to have the work judged, my process judged, and what if it doesn't go well? I kind of am nervous about putting this out. The nice thing about print on demand is that I can keep updating this as I see the feedback roll in. If I get any feedback, goal for tomorrow is set up the shop. I think I'm going to promote this on TikTok shop. It's not something I've worked with, but TikTok has the most reach. Day three, back to the drawing board, kind of. So after doing a bit more research, I realized that TikTok shop doesn't support print on demand slash drop shipping, which is what this is considered. There wasn't an easy way for me to allow Lulu to fulfill shipment on orders. Now, if I had a bunch of physical notebooks that I was ready to ship out, that might be a different story. But for now, I'm gonna need to look at other options. I'm going to try something else now, which is a Shopify and Lulu integration. It might be a little expensive, but I'm gonna sign up for a trial and just see how it goes. Shopify requires me to know what region my customers are in, and I'm kind of nervous about the long shipping times to the US, even though I think the majority of my customers are probably based in the US. Comment below what shipping region you're in if you're interested in a journal like this so that it can help me decide where I set my region I even looked at putting together a no-code landing page so I could collect some info about who's interested, your email, and what region you're in. And after trying out Unicorn Platform and realizing that I couldn't actually put together a form without being a paying member, I decided to create a Google form. So if you have some time, please take a moment to fill out the form if you're interested in this product to help me get more information about where I should try to set my region. One of the things that makes me nervous about this is that I'm basically letting you in on my inner process. And as a product manager, that makes me feel insecure in case somebody says, you jump straight into the solution without interviewing a bunch of people about the problem. But the thing is, I had this problem and sometimes you just wanna build something. I just wanna make something, even if it's not the perfect solution. I think just making something will let me learn what other problems people have. And just by putting this out there, I will learn something from the process. I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Please share any thoughts you have about this project below. And if you haven't already, subscribe so that you can see the rest of the episodes. Thanks.